Welcome to our fifth creator chat. Uh, today we've got a creator who found success creating comics from inspirational quotes. And last year, uh, Gavin published a junior graphic novel uh, with Penguin. Super Sidekicks is an excellent book for junior readers of books like Dogman or Bad Guys. And he's just published the third book in the Super Sidekick series, uh, which we're huge fans of in this house. Uh, and I'm really, really happy to welcome uh, Gavin on fan. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, Yogi. Um, yeah, it's really great to be um, featured and thanks for all your support with uh, the Australian uh, comic scene. We, tr we try. We do our best. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, to start with, I thought, uh, given the current situation, you know, first things first, how are you going? Are you working from home? Are you busier now than before? <laughs> uh, I'm well, thank you. Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, my, me, my wife and my little daughter, uh, we're all okay over here in Perth. Um, thankfully, you know, it's not as bad in, in WA as other parts of Australia. Um, so yeah, we're all okay. Um, yeah, I, nothing has changed for me. I, I work from home normally, so I'm very used to working from home and self-isolating. Most uh, cartoonists, I think, um, are very comfortable <laughs> self-isolating and just working away at their desk at home or in the little studio. So yeah, life hasn't changed much for me. Um, I'm still, you know, still working on the same things I would be um, even if there was no crisis. Yeah, in fact, I imagine you've been busy preparing for the book launch. Uh, and it must be really strange, I imagine, launching the book in the current environment. Yeah, so it is um, quite strange. Uh, I think uh, the whole book world and comic book world are kind of a bit scared of what's going to happen and how it's going to affect uh, the industry. Um, so, yeah, just as a creator with a book launching right now, I'm just kind of doing a lot of stuff online and trying to, you know, engage a lot more with my my social media followers and yeah, I, I'm trying to, you know, get in touch with various bookstores. Maybe I can send them a few little um, signed book plates, which they can pop into the books in the stores rather than me actually coming into the stores. Um, so yeah, it's a bit strange, but you know, thankfully I think kids books are still very popular, still are selling well. Um, so hopefully that we can all survive and come out the other side of this. Yeah, well, look, one of the most heartbreaking days for me when we were starting to close the library was uh, we, we, we were starting to organize a Comic Con uh, for the oh, library. Really? And, and, you know, to have to call, um, make a few calls to different creators and say, hey, you know, that thing that we talked about and we agreed yeah. on and all that, we're going to have to postpone because obviously at the moment, yeah. you know, the library is closed. Yeah. We don't know when we're opening things that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we do a lot of, um, yeah, school visits, library events, and for a lot of, um, uh, you know, illustrators and artists, that's a, you know, main source of income. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough few months, but, um, yeah, a lot of, some schools are doing, changing their bookings to doing online um, workshops and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to adapt, but um, yeah, I think we'll survive. So anyone, Gavin's pretty happy to do uh, online <laughs> it's great. I don't have to leave the presentations house. <laughs> and things like that. So, you know, um, yeah, anything that we can do to, to support artists, really, we should be doing now. I've been ordering books now just because you know it's like well, yeah <laughs> i, I want to support this artist so i'm just gonna be ordering this kind of thing anyway yeah, so um, that's great to hear <laughs> <laughs> yes now did you read comics as a kid and do you remember your favorite or the comic that changed everything for you that really marked you oh uh, yeah so i was obsessed with uh, comics as a kid um so yeah i read them all the time um so yeah, I, I remember reading, you know, I read everything, Mad Magazine. Um, my uncle collected Mad Magazines and Beano comics. So I read a lot of them. I loved them. Um, I read, you know, I kind of, as I got a bit older, I moved into 
uh, all the superhero stuff and, you know, the Marvel DC uh, image. Uh, I was right growing up when, you know, image took off in the, in the nineties. So that was kind of a big part of my childhood. But as for favorite comics, um, like the comic strips also were really influential newspaper strips. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I love Calvin and Hobbes. I loved all the early Garfield stuff. Um, and yeah, I kind of got into the, the Ninja Turtles, even the original, all the original um, Eastman and Laird books. I used to copy all of, all of the drawings and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I can't just single out one, you know, comic. Um, but yeah, I've been obsessed with the comics since I was um, a kid. Yes, uh, it sounds like you really read a very wide branch of yeah. Comics. So yeah, including all the European comics, uh, Asterix and Tintin. Um, yeah, they're really popular. So yeah, mm. I love those too. That's excellent. Um, what was the um, you know when did you start to write for comics, or when was the realization that you know I really want to do this? I want to dedicate my life to this. Uh, yeah. So. I've always dreamed of, you know, being a, a full-time cartoonist. Um, and yeah, it was kind of not realistic growing up uh, in, in Australia. It's quite a small industry. Uh, yeah. I, I'm from Perth. I grew up in Perth, which is even smaller than <laughs> Melbourne and Sydney. So yeah, it was very unrealistic growing up. Um, so yeah, I kind of went into graphic design after uni. Uh, my parents, you know, were kind of, uh, um, they were insistent that I go to university and get a, a decent job and that, you know, comics were, <laughs> comics were a waste of time and, and not a legitimate career path. So, yeah, I did graphic design. I worked as a graphic designer for almost 10 years after uni. And thankfully, I worked in a newspaper um, as a graphic artist. And mm -hmm. newspapers, of course, uh, not so much anymore, but back then they still had, you know, a good comic section in the newspaper. Um, so I managed to get a small strip published in there and I kind of dreamt of actually doing it full time. And eventually um, around 2012 is when I, I was getting more into web comics. They were kind of emerging yep. as getting more and more popular. And I decided to launch this new web comic called Zen Pencils in 2012. Um, and that's, yeah, when I quit, before that I quit my job and I just said, this is it, I'm gonna actually try and do it full time. And I gave myself, you know, six months to just work on this new web comic. And thankfully um, it was successful and I've managed to kind of eke out a living uh, <laughs> making comics since 2012. Yeah, uh, Zen Pencils actually did pretty well. And I'm happy to say that, um, uh, at my library, uh, uh, we have some digital uh, comics as well to, to read uh, through mm -hmm. BorrowBox. And, and we've got some pencils. We've got oh, really? volumes oh, cool. one, two, four, I think. Volumes yeah, there are, four, there are four collections in total. So yeah, the Zen Pencils um, web comics got collected into books. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there are four collections of those. Yeah, they're really awesome. And we've got all four of them on BorrowBox. So, you know, Kingston oh, Libraries, Crazy. Victoria, you can access them through BorrowBox in other libraries. <laughs> I don't know, because every library has a different catalog. A yeah. different one. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. good to hear. Now, um, tell us about Super Sidekicks in general. Um, what was the idea behind this series? Uh, yeah, so... Super Psychics, uh, I'd been doing Zen Pencils for like six, seven years and I wanted to kind of try and do something a bit different and get into kind of the book book world where kids, um, kids books basically. So um, I noticed that graphic novels were slowly making their way, their way into the mainstream book world and I wanted to try and, um, you know, get my foot in the door. So. I thought of, you know, what I loved as a kid, which was superhero comics and obviously superhero movies and superheroes in general are so popular right now. Um, so yeah, this is my little attempt at, at my um, kind of tribute to the superhero comics I loved as a kid. So Super Sidekicks is about this group of um, four 
sidekicks and they're, they're kind of sick and tired of being sidekicks and always having to do the dirty work for their, their adult superhero partners who get all the glory and all the fame. Uh, so they decide to, to kind of rebel against their adult partners and, and form their own super team, uh, which is just as good as the, the main um, adult super teams that are out there. And they're a local Australian super team too. So I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen an Aussie super team or superhero comic. Uh, so this is um, a little local uh, superhero team based in Sydney. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I, I remember when I saw the the trailer for the first book that you released. Yeah. You know, I don't know, a yeah, bit more than a year, year ago. A bit more than yeah, a year ago. Yep. And I remember watching the trailer and immediately calling my son, who is uh, <laughs> who's now nine, but he was eight back then. Yep. You know, and saying to him, "Watch this," and he absolutely loved it. He was laughing his head off. He asked me to watch the trailer, I don't know how many times. Oh, you know? really? <laughs> so, uh, so I knew that as soon as the book came out, I had to get it for him. And not only yeah. that, we, um, there was a special offer, I remember. I think it was $5 or something like that. Uh, it was $10, but... Or $10? You probably, yeah, you could have got it in like a department store for yeah. 6 or $7 first yeah you, you i can't remember exactly but it was pretty cheap and yeah we bought it for ourselves and then we bought five other copies um oh, that he gave to his that he gave to his best friends and to school as well so oh, we started thank spreading you. the word <laughs> thank you he's yeah. my number one number one customer <laughs> well i don't know i'm sure there are others anyway <laughs> uh you've published three super sidekicks books in pretty much a year. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many are there going to be in the series? Uh, well, um, hopefully there could be many, many more, but um, so far we're just, uh, the publisher's gonna just see how these three do and hopefully they want more. Um, but I'm not sure when the next one will be coming. So it kind of depends on how these three perform. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, yeah, I'm ready and I'm very eager to, to keep going with the series. Excellent. So in the first book, the team came together. Mm -hmm. um, or, the origin story, yeah. Yeah, moving away from those superheroes that always took credit for everything, but uh, yeah. weren't that great. In the second day, Save the World, uh, when the yeah. adults and you know, so-called real heroes couldn't. What can right. we expect of the third book? Oh yeah, so the third one is called Trial of Heroes. Um, and as the name suggests, they have to kind of um, complete this trial of heroes um, in order to kind of um, get invited to join this very exclusive uh, superhero club called HERO. And uh, HERO stands for the Heroic Earth Righteousness Organization. Um, <laughs> So the, the leader of the sidekicks is very keen to, to, to get membership into this organization because it will mean that the super sidekicks will have, um, they'll have legitimacy and they'll be taken seriously by all the adults in the world. Because they're still, um, you know, as Rod, Rodney Dangerfield said, that, you know, they're still not getting any respect. So yeah. they're trying to kind of, um, they have to compete this, complete this trial in order to get into the organization. Yeah, so I have the third book here with me. Oh, awesome. um, you've got an advanced copy. I love yep. Heroes. Um, excellent book. I loved it. Um, Thank you. I absolutely loved it. Now, um, I understand that Super Sidekicks has been published in other countries too. Can you tell us where and when? Uh, yep, so yeah, it's really exciting. Um, it, it's, uh, it's being published in the UK. Uh, so Book one is out in the UK at the moment. Uh, I think books two and three will be out next year because I think that they've been delayed because of the, the coronavirus. Um, but as, what's uh, most exciting is that they're going to be published in the US. Um, and that's coming, first, book one will be out in the US in November. Um, and there's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be in full color in the US. And nice. it's going to be yeah in like a fancy hardcover format, um, 
full color on on glossy paper. So it's going to look really awesome. And yeah, I'm really excited about that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it does well over there. Mm -hmm. I may need to get the American edition too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, who's the publisher in the US? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's the same. It's all under the Penguin Random House um, umbrella. And I think Random House, they've just launched a new graphic novel um, label called RH Graphic. Um, so Random House Graphic, and it'll be under that um, label in America. And that's coming out in November, you said? November, yep, November. Excellent, good to hear. Well, um, at the end, I'd like to ask for three books that you've read recently. Um, okay. <laughs> and, you know, that uh, you recommend uh, others to, uh, to read. So do you want to talk about that? Uh, three books. So yeah, that's tough. Um, so I've, I've reread a, a book on writing um, recently. It was by, it's by um, Murakami and it's called uh, What I Talk About When I Talk About Running. I don't know if you've heard of that book. Yes. Yeah, so this very famous writer, um, Murakami, a Japanese writer, and he also loves to run. Um, and he kind of, he wrote this very sweet uh, memoir of how he became a runner and also how he became a writer. And it kind of, it's just a really interesting read, especially if you uh, like to write or do anything creative. Um, so that was very motivating for me. And just another novel I've read recently um, that I loved, it's called Pachinko. Um, and it's by, um, I forgot the author's name, sorry, but it's about uh, a Korean family in Japan. Um, it's this really um, like a family drama um, it's not really what I normally read. I wanted to try and read something a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I loved it. It's really great. I highly recommend that one, Pachinko. Yeah, I, um, I actually absolutely love Murakami, but I haven't read oh, that book. Yeah, yeah, the, oh, the yeah wind I up, recommend that one. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle is one of my favorite, favorite books. Oh, I haven't read that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, I'll make sure I write it down. <laughs> Yeah, I I absolutely love that. Well, I, I I like all the books that I've read of his, but uh, that one's my favorite. Um, yeah, and any comics? Uh, comics. I've been reading the um, the Hilo series um, by Judd Winnick. So uh, it's not as popular in Australia as it is in America, um, but yeah, it's really popular over there. So that's really it's just a fun read. It's just kind of um, it's also kind of like a superhero type thing. So it's just good to see um, how another creator does handle superheroes. Um, I haven't read many um, like adult uh, comics um, lately. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I've been a bit slack. Um, yeah. Kind of think. Yeah, no, that, that's all right. Uh, yeah. You know who's a big fan of Hilo? Um, my son. Oh, your son? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Loves it. Yeah. Absolutely loves that series. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'd love for, you know, Super Psychics to kind of be as popular as, as Hilo one day. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Gavin, thank you so much. Uh, for Thanks the for chat. having me. You no know? worries. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope things go well, um, you know, with this book here in Australia and also, you know, launching the book in... Um, in the US as well and all that. And I hope that, uh, you know, some schools or libraries as well um, can have you doing some virtual workshop or something like that. I recently saw, um, I can't remember, I think it was Hume, Hume Libraries here in Melbourne. Uh, right. had, a, had a Facebook manga workshop with oh, an cool. artist, you know. So I encourage other libraries to, to do that as well. Yeah. yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, um, Yogi. Um, thanks for all your support with the Australian graphic novels and comics. Um, and yeah, if you're a library or a librarian out there or a school, um, please consider, you know, supporting the local creators who are doing it a bit tough at the moment. Uh, we're all available to do workshops online, um, school visits online. Um, yeah, it would be awesome to support us and support the industry. 
um, and we can keep making these books for all the kids out there. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. See ya.